राम 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 भगवान श्री योगी राम सूरत कुमार की जाए सर्वां योगी राम सूरत कुमार पढ़वत we have been able to sing the powerful name of bhagwan for one more hour today and offered at the feet of bhagwan and before we submit our today's prayers we should go through an experience or two of devotees so that we will also relive them and remembering the leela of bhagwan the work that he has done for the people we shall be very very grateful for all that he has done for us now today we shall see the experience of a family from kunur near uti shri rangarasu his wife anaja and his three children jayanti maheshwaran and lokanand now jayanti's husband is this shri sharavanan thirmeni about whom we had already seen how he got his job after his finishing his professional degree he was in search for a job and was unable to find one the time was very bad for him and he did not know how to come out of this and at that time one day he had a dream in which lord shiva himself in the form of a beggar came to his door and begged for something we've gone through the story before he did not know who it was but then he felt very bad that he could not he did not even know him and then his friend saravana kumar pandey had come from saudi arabia and he joined him for coming to this ashram not knowing it was he it was bhagwan who came to him in the dream it's only after he came came into the ashram after seeing the photograph of bhagwan he remembered it was he who came and asked for the arms and of course soon after his coming to the ashram he got a job in saudi arabia now one day his wife jayanti that is daughter of tangarasu 
sent a photograph of Bhagwan to these people and said, this photograph should be kept up in our house and you people do a little puja and nama chanting before him and you see how the whole life changes afterwards. Like the, the whole life will turn upside down. Something like this, she said. And naturally these people were looking at him, they were drawn to him and they began to keep this photograph and worship. Their sons, two sons, Maheshwaran and Lokanan, though they had done their degrees, they were still working in shops. One had kept the textile shop, the other the electronic shop. And very little was the income out of this and they were not satisfied at all. So they, more than anyone else, they began to worship Bhagwan. They kept on chanting, chanting, chanting Bhagwan's Nama and prayed and prayed. Now one day, Lokanand had a dream in which a sadhu with white beard appeared at his doorstep and asked for something to eat. Immediately in the dream he saw Jayanti running into the kitchen bringing something like from the rice, chawal, and she brought it out saying that Lokanan, there is some rasam there, you bring that. She was walking in the front and then she gave this to the sadhu who was standing at the door. And by the time Lokanan got the rasam, he was unable to reach this sadhu because the sadhu was going back. Immediately he called out, Aya, Aya, please wait, please wait. Please take this and go. But the man was not even listening and he was just moving ahead. And second time Shilokanan made an attempt, once again shouting, Aya, Aya, please stop. And the third time he lost his patience. He said, I've been calling out to you, I've been calling you twice, try. Still you don't pay heed. And as soon as he said, he said, I have brought rasam for you, only for that I have been calling out and you are not even turning up, you are not even turning to me. Immediately that sadhu turned, he stopped at the spot and then turned towards him. Just one look from the sadhu, Lokanan saw his eyes were like fire and it was pouring light. Just for a fraction of a second, he saw the sadhu stopping and turning, one glance and immediately something from his eyes, some light from his eyes came with such force and got into him. Suddenly he, he was flooded with ecstasy. And the dream stopped and he woke up. Soon after that, it's needless to say, stay, needless to say that he got a job in Mumbai. So this is how he was blessed. In the meantime, his brother, elder brother Maheshwaran was also crying out to Swami so much he also wanted to find a good job like his brother, but somehow it was not happening. So he prayed and prayed and one day he kept crying also so much and he did not know when he fell asleep. He also had a dream. In the dream, he was suddenly falling down into a deep abysmal pit. He was crying out 
And suddenly, a man with green turban and white beard, he appeared on the scene. He put out his hand and lifted Maheshwaran out of the pit, saying, Don't fear, don't worry, I will take care of you. What assurance from Bhagwan! If you could get such dreams, how real it would be. Bhagwan had always said any dream about him would be real, that he would really appear in their dreams and do something which he could not do in the body. So the dreams that we get are all very real. Soon after that, Maheshwaran also got an interview from Saudi Arabia and it took him five days to prepare and attend. And all those five days, a butterfly came, sat there and would not move. For five days, a butterfly was sitting inside the front hall and would not budge. It's only after he got the assurance that he got the job, the butterfly mysteriously disappeared. Now when you go through this story, the story of somebody falling into a pit and then being saved by Bhagavan, I think sometime back, a few months back perhaps, we saw something similar. Sri Jayasudas, in those times, was in utter poverty. If he got food three times a day, it was a luxury. And this little boy in abject poverty began to sell papers all the time moving the street. One day he did not get anything. He did not get any money at all. He was feeling very hungry. He did not eat anything from morning. And at one point he fainted and he was falling, he was going deep, deep, deep down into a pit. Just before he fell unconscious, he remembered very distinctly that he was falling down deep down into a pit, but then an elderly man, an old man with white beard and green turban, stretched his hands and he fell into his hands. Bhagwan, it looked so much like Bhagwan, of course he didn't know, the boy, Jesus did not know at that time who it was. He knew that some Swami with white beard was there ready to hold him, to cushion him. And then for a long time he did not know who it was, but of course soon after that he could not look back at all and there was progress after progress in his life. He became a very popular singer much to the delight of people. So if you get such dreams of falling into a pit and somebody coming, rushing to the spot and holding you in hand before you touched the bottom of the pit, know that it is real and it's a great blessing to you for your problems. Now, after that, Sri Rangarasu and Manaja, they were planning to go to Kailash. They had come to the ashram, the first time they had come to the ashram and gone back, all the problems were getting solved one after the other. So they had developed faith and soon after Jayanti sent his photograph, they truly started worshipping him. 
Now because of this desire to go to Kailash, they made enquiries, they applied to a particular agency and from those people there was a pamphlet on the Kailash Yatra, all the details. Now the same day they got a Sharanagadam, the Ashram magazine. They were so happy and what was more delightful than that was the picture of Bhagawan sitting on the peak of mine, Mount Kailash. You can imagine what a delightful shock it must have been to them. Immediately Vanaja shouted to her husband, come here, come here, just see. We wanted to take permission from Bhagawan, we wanted to go to the ashram, have darshan of the Shilamurti of, of Bhagawan. But you see how Bhagawan has arranged everything. He has come to us directly and how sitting on top of the Mount Kailash. So you see we have got the permission from Bhagawan straight. So they were very happy, they began to make arrangements and all through their trip to Kailash and Mansarova, they spotted a butterfly now and then coming along with them, assuringly that Bhagawan was with them all the time. Not only that, when they came back also they spotted butterflies here and there accompanying them. And so they knew that everything was being arranged by Bhagawan and he was being their companion also all through the journey. So it was butterfly, butterfly, butterfly everywhere. And one day at home, while cooking, Vanaja was thinking, okay, we have been to Kailash and we are back now and it's quite some time we spotted a butterfly in the house. Why wouldn't Bhagwan come to our house now that we have seen Kailash, been to Kailash and come back by his grace? As soon as she thought like that, she saw a butterfly rushing inside. And you can imagine she was absolutely delighted. So this article of Rangarasu says how if one should think of Bhagawan deeply, immediate help is rushed to them. His both sons got the jobs. They could also finish their Kailash trip. Now every one of them is no small place. So Now this Bhagwan always said that he would come in the dreams of people and get a certain thing done which he could not do in his physical form. Even while he was there living in the physical form, he used to say this. When this beggar could not achieve something in the physical form, then he might come in the dream and instruct people. He might come in the dream and make his assurances to people. Now that Bhagavan is here in front of us with his raised hand and a constant flow of praise from the hand. Let us submit our today's prayers. Bhagavan, we beg you again and again and again for your immediate intervention to free the entire humanity from the dreadful grip of this virus and its clan. Please bring back a dharmic normalcy everywhere in every aspect of life. And Bhagwan, people are panicking and there are other unwanted thoughts causing troubles to them, problems to them. 
Only you can root out all these negativities from people and kindly stop this wild fire spread of the disease. Please enter the medicine so that it will work and kill those viruses once for all. And Bhagwan, many, many people have been affected by the second wave and not all of them get a room and treatment. Not all of them are lucky. It is heart-rending to see how they are staying outside the hospitals. We beg you, Bhagwan, to bless them with a room and proper treatment. And all those brave soldiers were slogging day and night at the very risk of their life, fighting the disease for the sake of the others. Please give them protection and a lift to our economy and above all. When we are in need of something, we know that you have told us many times, we just have to call out to you and you would send immediate help. And sometimes if people are confused as to whose grace it was, immediately you appear in the form of a butterfly for us to know that it's you who has done it. We beg you again and again to bless us with constant remembrance of your name so that you would always be around. We would be able to feel your presence constantly. Please give us that attitude of being an instrument in your hands so that we would live only for your sake. And above all, Bhagwan, give us that purity of mind, purity of heart, where we could see only you, your presence and your grace in every incident of our life. Jai Doviram I'm so good.